Pick one, two, one, two. The Performance Motorsports Network presents Burning Rubber Radio. Burning Rubber, baby! I know what the tradition is. You don't even have to explain it. And here it is. Burning Rubber, baby! Now, from the White Lightning TV studios in Statesville, North Carolina, here is your host, Andy DeLay. Burning Rubber, baby. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Burning Rubber Radio. We are the fastest 60 minutes in motorsports. I'm your host, Andy DeLay. Long beside Wayne Owens this week, everybody else is out playing hooky except for the NASCAR chef, Ron. Ah, Ron. Oh, my God. Uh, I was going to say, you're going to call it the NASCAR chef, Ron Caps? You no, know, exactly. <laughs> I was looking at a story just a second ago. Yeah, the NASCAR chef, John Dix, he's going to be with us, of course, with all of his good eating and everything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Wayne, we're ready to kick this off. We have a brand new advertising partner that is with us. And uh, you want to tell everyone about him? Yes, yeah, so we've got Luat Coffee Energy based out of uh, Italy. Folks, we've uh, we, we've come across these folks uh, with the amazing help of one Alex Pignon, and, uh, who, you know, officially now, Andy, we can say is on his road to transitioning from two wheels to four. Uh, in uh, going from Superbikes all the way up to the world of NASCAR here. We've been following his progress all the way through this year and even in years past, but now we're uh, now we're getting to the point where you know, he's getting ready to go test a possible ARCA car next month. He's got a, he's got a whole bunch of stuff going for him, man. Yeah, he sure does. Uh, we're looking forward to follow him in every step of the way. Uh, up hopefully someday into the cup series uh, i know but next year or this year i should say in october hopefully we'll be bringing you all the action and everything from alex and uh so follow close i was telling my friends uh wayne that we're gonna really be playing the talladega knights thing we're gonna be have the <laughs> the foreign driver <laughs> uh we're gonna have a little ricky booby <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll have that foreign driver that everyone uh, we that you can't hate Alex, but in that movie you're like, right. oh my gosh. Yeah. But anyway, it's going to be good stuff. I do have one other thing. I want to I want to give a shout out to someone here that I met this week after not seeing for a year or two, Katie Franklin, uh, who is with Team Carrillo Realty. If you're listening on the Tan Talk Radio Network, folks, you need a house. You're looking for a house. You're going to give Team Carilla Realty and Katie Franklin a call, 465-6085. Tell, uh, tell her that Andy sent you. Burning now, rubber, baby. Now, now, granted, for those of us that are not from the Tampa Bay area, if you're looking to move to the Tampa Bay area, area code on that is 727. There you go, man. That's it, 727. <laughs> so what do you, we got lined up? So this week, we are going to be checking in with the ladies from South Alabama Speedway, Andy, and uh, their season just wrapped up for 2023. So we're going to, we're going to be talking to Malia and uh, catch up on everything that's been happening over the, last, uh, over the course of the last year. Hey, but, but it just sounds like you said we're going to put ketchup on everything. <laughs> That's, I know you like doing that to all your food, your steaks and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, right, I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with ketchup on steak. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh my gosh, <laughs> folks! If what you go to Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page and post up to what you think about him and putting ketchup on steak. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with ketchup on steak. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and of course, those folks are watching us on Wingding TV. I just gave him the Kentucky Howdy. Go check it out and see what that is on Wingding TV. See, he might not like the sound effects, but I'm about to start. I'm about, no. to, I'm about to start pulling some out on him. For, just man, for everyone's one. saying they're sick of hearing that Muttley and garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, they, yeah. It's an it's a, it's 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 value added content, shall we say? We'll just leave it. That. Oh my yeah. god. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about, man. Uh, the round of yep. 16 is done. We'll be starting a round of 12 in the Cup Series. Yep. And got a then, new Arca champion. Yep. We got the round of 12 in Xfinity coming up. We've got yep. uh the final four is already getting shaped up in the Truck Series. Uh oh, and uh you know, it's almost a shame that Zach's not here this week cuz Verstappen actually didn't win this weekend. Really? That's Formula One, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So Verstappen actually didn't win this weekend. So we'll we'll be talking about all of that coming up here in the next little bit on Burning Rubber Radio. Folks, don't go anywhere because when we come back, news of the week, and you know how we do it, baby. 
I'm Andy DeLay, and you're listening to Burning Rubber Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Want to maximize your driving potential? Drive Refine is the driver optimization program for you. Led by NASCAR winning driver Joey Coulter. No matter if you race locally, nationally, or on a simulator, with a little or a lot of experience, Drive Refine focuses on your tuning scale to optimize communication between the driver and their crew chief. Visit DriveRefine.com for more information today. Day. Hey, this is former NASCAR driver Joey Coulter. This isn't your typical driver coaching. This is Driver Fine. Burning Rubber Radio is social. Like the show at facebook.com forward slash burning rubber radio. Follow on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash BRR underscore PMN. And on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash burning rubber radio. Now back to more burning rubber. And we are back on burning rubber radio on the performance motorsports network. Tan talk radio network wingding.tv also available on your Roku, your fire stick, wherever you get streaming television at check to see if the wingding app is available for you. And, uh, I can also say I've got it on my Roku and, uh, I get access to some pretty cool programming, Andy. Yeah, really, you know, that's 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 all right. When I when I leave the house, I keep it on burning rubber radio to mm-hmm. keep the dog entertained and the cats entertained. <laughs> I, I was I was gonna say because yeah, uh, God knows that dog of yours, man. He uh, he uh, uh, God, they're running around like crazy. Yeah, it's a little dosh hound. You know how those things uh-huh. get, man. Yeah, they get they get wired for sound, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, nothing, no, no worse than a, what, what, what was it, a daggum chihuahua? <laughs> yeah, chihuahua. I saw this thing on Facebook, man. It showed these, uh, uh, a picture of a chihuahua and it was all buffed out and, you know, like, <laughs> and I said, what t- chihuahuas look like. We think they are when the doorbell rings. <laughs> <laughs> at the, and at that point, when the door opens, it's like, porquito taco bell? <laughs> ah, oh my gosh. That's going back a few years. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Folks that grew up in the 90s or lived through the 90s, you know exactly what we're talking about there. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. God. And, and that's back when Taco Bell was actually halfway good, too. You know, it, I, well, we're not landing them as a sponsor. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, we love it. News of the week, though, guys. we got to get to it here this week. And, uh, yep, round of 16, Andy. It is, uh, it is 100% over and done with now. We move into the round of 12. And uh, Denny Hamlin... Uh, regrettably, gets the win this past weekend at Bristol. And uh, with that being the case here, Joey Logano and, again, I say regrettably, Kevin Harvick have been eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. You know what's really sad is that Michael McDowell, mm-hmm. sixth-place finish at Bristol, he was strong all night. Yep. And uh, he gets eliminated. Of course, your Ricky Stenhouse Jr., too, catches the boot. They're no longer in the playoffs, and uh, off we go to Texas for the yep. round of twelve. Yep, we are off to Texas for the round of twelve. One one name that I that I actually am glad to see that did make it through to the next round because, as we saw, heading into Bristol, you know he was on the cut line, uh, potentially you know going to be eliminated, and that being one Martin Truex Jr. Uh, so good to see MTJ make it across, and uh, and that and and actually you know it's a great segue here. Uh, we found out this past weekend that sadly, uh, Sherry Pollux, yeah. who had been with MTJ for many, many years, uh, was also the co-founder of the MTJ Foundation. Uh, sadly, lost her battle with ovarian cancer this past weekend. Yeah, we give a moment of silence here for that. Yeah, Sherry Pollux, forty-four years old, there uh, lost her battle with. Ovarian cancer, and she. I, I tell you what, Andy. Yeah, I, I, I had chances to. Uh, and I think we ran into her like, like just in passing yeah. at Daytona last year, and we did. and I know I ran into her at Watkins Glen the week before uh, as well last year. Sherry, Sherry was a light in the garage area, man. Like just, a, just, just a, a beam of light, just you know, positivity, just happiness. I, I mean that that you know that's that's a woman you want in your corner. Oh yeah, man. That's a sad and it's a sad loss, and I know there's uh, some other folks uh, that are dealing with some other issues that are in our racing circles too, and we wish the best. And also, 
Sadly, uh, a host of our show here a few weeks back lost his son. Uh, if you all remember, yep. Hillbilly Fred Mathis yep. on Burning Rubber Radio was with us for several years back in uh, 2010 to around 2013 and mm -hmm. lost his son to a drunk driver here a few weeks ago. Well, folks, we uh, Burning Rubber Radio is going to be uh, raising money to cover the final expenses because uh, – uh, the truth of the matter is, Fred doesn't have a lot of money. That's the mm -hmm. truth of the matter, and uh, needs some help burying his son. So if you keep an eye on the Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page, I'll uh, show you how we're doing. We're going to – Burning Rubber Radio is uh, providing uh, uh, gift certificates that are going to be raffled off and mm -hmm. raising money for Fred. And, Wayne, you said something about starting uh, – yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see about getting a GoFundMe going so that we can uh, try and help Fred get everything situated, folks. So do uh, do be on the lookout over on the uh, Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page, also on our X page as well, uh, Instagram. We're gonna we're gonna try and get everything put up there within the next day or so to go ahead and start working on helping Hillbilly Fred get some things covered there. So and thank you everybody uh, in advance for this. Yeah, yeah, and Fred and Fred's even already come out so much as. You know, saying how how grateful he is that you know things are things are moving the way they're moving so far uh, after everything that's gone down. Oh man, we gotta we gotta get off the sad train here, Andy. We gotta we gotta yeah, be buddy. happy here because uh, man, JRM man, they man they showed up and showed out at Bristol this past weekend. It was the one race of the year where Junior got in the car and uh, actually did pretty <laughs> good and led for a little bit too. Until he about burnt up in the car, thing caught yeah. fire, and he showed his fire suit up his left leg, or uh -huh. right leg, excuse me, it was, it was uh, on fire. You know, honestly, Junior Motorsports had a shit, uh-oh, uh -oh. was that the, uh, <laughs> that was those, those stinking air wrenches, any, they had a bad night uh, at Bristol, because everybody, Junior, of course, led 48 laps, but of course, Carl caught on fire, so that was the end of his night. Everybody else wrecked except... For all guy or who yep. won. Yep. So uh and, congrats uh, to him. Yeah, congrats to Justin Allgaier on getting the win this past weekend at Bristol. And uh <laughs> I actually saw something funny on X over the weekend here, Andy, where uh uh so somebody created a post. I guess, I guess they claimed they talked to Kelly Earnhardt uh after the race. And uh supposedly Junior had made a comment, which we we know now obviously has been since debunked. Uh, but it, <laughs> they made the comment where, uh, where junior was like, yeah, Kelly says I can't race no more after this year. And, uh, Kelly, even Kelly come out. She's like, I never said such a thing. I can see junior's wife saying enough, but not, uh, <laughs> Kelly. Right. Exactly. No, she goes out and she likes to race. She used to be really good. If folks don't know Kelly Earnhardt, uh, uh -huh. of course, Dale juniors, uh, Dale senior's daughter yep. is, uh, one hell of a, of a, she, 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 she was an ASA racer herself back in the day. Yeah, and so, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, you know, between her and Junior running JRM and every, and everybody they get, they have working for them under the, under the, uh, behind the scenes and everything like that, man, a fantastic team. And if you ever want to go see the shop, folks, it's right down there in Mooresville, North Carolina. So if you're right down there, you know, who knows? You might, you might even run into Junior while you're down there. Oh, yeah, Junior and everybody else. You know... Talking to Kelly, Bobby Dale Earnhardt, of course, who's mm -hmm. with us, and he's real busy a lot of the times. He can't get on the show, but, of course, he's a member of our show here. He keeps saying he's bringing his Aunt Kelly on the show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need to put his feet to the fire. <laughs> we need to put her on here. Yeah, we need, to, we, need, we need to get Kelly on the show here. We've been talking about it for a few months now. Actually, no, you know what's funny, too? Uh, before we get back to more news of the week here real quick, uh, this past weekend, and of course, yeah, I, I say it every week. You know, I'm a full time Uber driver. That's what I do outside of Burning Rubber Radio. Uh, I had the utmost pleasure of running into two boys, the new da our, our good old buddy Dave Vine said, Andy. Really? Yeah. Good old Dave Vine. He he's a jack man, and he's no, been, uh, he's no, a he's a gas man. Gas man. I said, I'm thinking of Mike Marks as our jack man. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Vine Lord. said, excuse me, buddy, because our gas man, he, who did he gas for this past weekend? Uh, he was doing Alpha Prime again this weekend with uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt and all those guys. And, uh, yeah, so uh, so the couple of guys I run into, ironically, were also fellow Alpha Prime team members. 
Really? That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I picked him up from uh picked him up from a bar down in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh and and you know, we got to talking and all of a sudden the motorsports topic got brought up and I'm like, wait a minute, do y'all know this guy or that guy? And they're like, Holy how do you know him? I'm like <laughs> Because of a show called Burning Rubber Ray. We know that show too. I'm like, we're uh, going to confuse the heck out of everyone in Charlotte, man. They're going to be like, Burning Rubber Radio, aren't they Uber drivers? <laughs> or they're going to be like, I heard that from somewhere. Yeah, they, they drive Uber. It's, I, well, hey, you never know, folks. If you run into this ugly mug in Charlotte, North Carolina, now you know. Oh, that's all right. He, he actually drives fairly decent, too, if he doesn't pull out in front of traffic like almost happened to us. Oh, pff, yeah, okay. I had I had right away. We were good, but we, we won't get into that one. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> sounds like you're as healthy as I am. Yeah, healthy as a horse, right? Uh, yeah, sick horse. <laughs> Man, I've been down with something. I swear it was COVID for the last week, but it wasn't COVID. Right. But it's the worst cold that I've had in 15 years, easily. Oh yeah, yeah. No. I'm still dealing with it a week later. Oh yeah, and that's and that and that you know that's been the way it's been at least with me here of late too. When I get sick, you know, stuff like that, it'll last for like two weeks. But then after that, hundred percent, I feel like a million bucks. And and anyway, how have you not sweated it out with all that alcohol you've been drinking lately? <laughs> oh man, yeah. I haven't drank lately. I still I went out and got my third bottle of this blue chair bay stuff <laughs> that Boy, you, you had to bring to my house. I was gonna say you are hooked on it. Oh my gosh, that's it. We and and the wife and I also knocked off a bottle of that banana blue chair bay. Oh my gosh, was that good? Mm-hmm. Yep. Curse you. <laughs> Love you too, brother. Uh, yeah. Moving on to one final bit of news here before we get re- a couple of bits of news here before we get ready to head to our next Ford Fuel here. And uh, Bristol saw the uh, truck series in the round, ra- um, not the round of uh, 16, the round of eight, rather, eight. excuse me, uh, for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Uh, Camping we- World, you <laughs> said it. You said it. I've been wanting to say that all year long. <laughs> Oh, uh, craftsman, craftsman. There we go. We'll uh, we'll just re we'll 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 forget I ever said camping world, but um, yeah, no, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series rather, and uh, we see Corey Heim advance himself into the final four uh, with the win at Bristol this past weekend because their playoffs actually started almost three weeks before the NASCAR Cup Series. Yeah, and of course, you know they don't run as many races during the year, so. Yep. They're in their last, almost ready for their last few races before. Mm-hmm. And, and November's right around the corner, and yeah. that's Phoenix. So yeah, don't, don't, we, we don't got... remind me. Don't remind me. It's hard to believe that. Uh, and, folks, and, folks, if you're listening to us on Tantalk Radio Network on Saturday uh, or even on one of our affiliates that airs right around Thursday or something like that, the first official day of fall is literally Thursday. Don't, don't, no one told Florida that. <laughs> Well, man, it's hotter than fire down here. I'm sick of it. I'm ready for. I'm ready to cash in and oh. and send El Nino back packing and get cold again. Dude, you should have been up here this last weekend. Like it was yesterday, for instance, prime example. Because we 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 were in the uh, si- uh, the bottom side of uh, Hurricane Lee that was going through New England. Oh yeah, and uh, man, it was yesterday, sixty eight degrees. Man, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Dude, it was wonderful. I had the windows down, was just enjoying that cool Carolina breeze. But yeah, that's uh, that's its own thing there. Uh, one other thing we're going to touch on real quick here before we get ready to move on to our next foreign fuel here and get ready to talk to our guest from South Alabama Speedway is Lane Riggs. Andy, we, we've talked about him. We've talked about Carson Quapple, both great friends of the show and their dads too. Also great friends of the show here. Lane Riggs has now been confirmed. He is going to be heading to Colleague for a multi-race Xfinity Series deal, Andy. That's good. He's uh, moving into decent equipment, too. Mm-hmm. So, Lane Riggs, congratulations, buddy. Colleague racing. Of course, that's the home of our very own Jeremy Taylor. Yep. He does the body work and stuff out there. And, mm-hmm. and some spotting, too, for A.J. Allmendinger, who didn't have a good weekend this past no. weekend in Bristol. No, he did not. 
it's funny, uh, Jeremy, he gets real quiet whenever. <laughs> I noticed that, yeah. 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 You know, the flogging is given out at the shop on Monday. Uh-huh. It's like, but, yeah, it's good stuff. But when are we going to talk about the Arca series? Uh, so we'll we'll actually talk about the Arca series when we come, ba uh, come back on later in the show here since we'll have right. a little bit more time for News of the Week. But speaking of uh, Lane Riggs real quick, on that debut, uh, he is actually going to be debuting at Texas this weekend. Oh, all right. In a college car. In a college car. So that's going to be some great stuff. Mm. But I'll tell you what, folks, we have got to step aside. We've got to take our next foreign fuel. And when we come back, Andy, we're going to be checking in with the ladies from South Alabama Speedway. All right. I'm Captain Jeff Figures from Florida Fishing and Adventures. Do you want to constantly catch more fish, spend less time changing baits? If so, Monster 3X baits, jigs, and scents are the answer. Monster 3X baits are tough, durable, and resistant, which allows you to catch more fish per bait. The combination of the Monster 3X lure with the Procure Bait Super Scent, you will be landing more fish right away. Whether it's the Monster 3X Ultra Soft or the X Swim lures, Swim Shad, Paddle Tails, Crawfish, or the X Frog, Monster 3X, you'll always find it in my tackle box. Visit our website at burningrubberradio.com for recipes from the NASCAR chef, John Dix, and more great content. Now back to more Burning Rubber Radio. And we are back on Burning Rubber Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network, Tan Talk Radio Network, Wingding.tv on your Roku, your Fire Stick, wherever you get streaming television. And don't forget, make sure you go check out the Burning Rubber Radio channel on the Wingding.tv app. And uh, yep. Andy, it is that time of the show here, brother, where we get into our featured guest spot of the week. And you know we got we got a young lady on here that we haven't had on in a while. All right, yeah, man, South Alabama Speedway, gonna get to talk some good racing and see what's going on down at South Alabama because we like to check in with all of our folks and they're our folks down yep. at South Alabama. That they are South Alabama Speedway and Malia Hills on the line with us. Malia, welcome back, darling. It's been a, it's been too long. It definitely has. I was looking at the last time we talked. I think it was like a year or two ago. Yeah, at least a year ago, yeah. And uh, back, back when back when we had the uh, back when we had the camera working in the side studio, and you and you guys were sitting there trying to trying to not uh, trying to not go crazy with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So uh, so South Alabama Speedway. Uh, you were telling me a little bit. Uh, a little bit before we went back on the air here, that uh, it's been a it's been a year of rainouts, huh? Yes, sir. It has, especially at the beginning of the year. We were just plagued with rainouts every time you turned around. Oh man, gotta love those El Nino years, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Not really, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly right. Not really. Well, yeah, trust me, I learned that lesson coming down to South Florida in the middle of July. Don't ever wear jeans down there, folks. Um, oh no <laughs> that's like peeling no, a, that's like peeling i'm a telling you you night. need to wear jeans wayne if it, people <laughs> saw you without jeans they'd be like put on jeans baby <laughs> uh well you know there there's oh we won't go into that anyhow let's <laughs> talk some racing in south alabama speedway what's been going on lately down there other than ray outs We've actually had a very good local car count show all year. We've had some good tight racing, and, you know, our points battles are heating up, and that's what's coming up on September the 30th. We're going to decide three season um, champions wow. that weekend, and then October the 14th we'll round out the rest of them. Okay. How many uh, – so so three different series champions coming up uh, uh, here at the end of September, and then uh, October the 14th, you guys are going to be crowning uh, – how, uh, how many more series are you going to be crowning in October? Um, you're going to make me count them out now. <laughs> 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 so September 30th will be our Super Stock Mini Sportsman and Mini Cup. Okay. And then um, October 14th will be the Modified Roadrunner, Coyote, and Cup Light. Okay, and then so. we also have the Crown Vicks. They're not in our points champion. We're just kind of letting them start off this year. Mm -hmm. But that class is building. And then we're also going to have a street stock 50 lap um, 2000 to win race that weekend oh, wow. as well. Nice. All right. Nice. So, so, fo so, so, folks, three championships coming up here at the end of September. And then October the 14th, they're going to have four more championships decided. 
plus a 2000 to win race plus crown Vix. I mean, it, 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 it's going to be, you know, it's kind of funny, Malia. We were talking about this, me and Andy were a couple weeks ago, how, uh, you know, the fact is, you know, I'm an Uber driver. He's a cop by day. It's a legitimate smoking to bandit. You got those crown Vicks out there. You, yeah. you, you, you've got your smokies. Now you just need some bandits out there racing them. <laughs> oh, that, that, I have not thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crown Victoria is without a doubt, and I'm sure many of the law enforcement officers out there listening right now agree, is the best ever police car that at least I've had or that's been around. So, well, you know, we need to put a burning rubber radio Vic out there and put <laughs> my fat rear end behind the wheel and have a good time. I'm for Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and- well, we got we got we got to make sure we got we got to make sure if we put a Crown Vic out there and put Andy even remotely close to a racing surface, make sure we have skid mark proof fire suits. Oh my god. Really, <laughs> dude? Oh boy. So you make fun of Tony Stewart's for dropping them in his pants too? No, man, and I didn't even do that. But anyway, uh, if I bring that Vic out there, we're going to have to put some lights on the top of it, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, the thought the thoughts that are running through our heads right now trying to pl- plan Andy going back out on a racing surface. That's a scary thought. Just saying, folks. Um <laughs> No, don't 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 worry. He well, actually no. You know what? You know what we should do? I, I just thought about this. I should get a hold of John Schneider, old Bo Duke himself, and literally do Smoking the Bandit with uh, with John Schneider. Get John out there. Have have him play Bandit. Andy play Smokey, and see who wins. That would be a good I time. I'm sure John would be up for it. <laughs> oh man, that's a that's a that's a heck of an idea, Malia. I think we need to try and facilitate that in South Alabama. I would love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> well folks you heard it first right here on burning rubber radio the 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 bell the building blocks of Smokey versus bandits even though he was dukes of hazard i'm sure he'd love it then when we tell him about this he'll be like what are you get me into i can hear this <laughs> no no john he'd be like sure sign me up yeah uh, right so anyway oh my lord yeah, we had the Rattler out there uh, at South Alabama earlier this year, mm-hmm. right? Yes, sir. And uh, how was the show for that? How did that uh, turn out? Well, that started our rain. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, Friday night was a complete washout. Saturday and Sunday were excellent. You know, it was a great show. Everything you could have asked for on that. Um but it took us, I believe, until the first race of May to be able to get all of our Rattler races completed. Wow. Man. We kept getting rained out in April. We'd make a date to race in April, and then we'd get rained out, so then we'd make a rain-out date and get rained out again. And oh, no. Finally- Oh man, I can I can I I can already tell where that was going. It's like it's like reschedule. Oh nope nope, do it again. Reschedule. Oh nope nope, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, a lot of people just don't understand why you can't throw everything into those next two days. But mm-hmm. I mean, some people do have to sleep. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's I mean, right. I, I I get what they're wanting totally, but I mean. When you're family owned and you're paying employees and everything like that, mm-hmm. you want us to our best ability, and we've got to sleep somewhere yep. during that time. We just can't to push everything in because you got a lot for blown motors, mm-hmm. accidents, and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, they've got to understand that you're doing the very best you can with what you're given. Well, and you know that's uh, that's a point that I remember hitting home with uh, with another show that I used to be a part of uh, for a little while there. And uh, and this guy actually is a track announcer at uh, at some small Georgia dirt tracks, and you know it, it was the talk about you know promoters and you know fans how fans can get a little uh, Karen esque at times, and you know the fact is you know the promoters you know, track track officials track personnel in general everybody has a job to do but everybody is also human so the fact of the matter is people need to be able like you said go home get some sleep. 
come back, be fresh and ready for the next day. And if it has to be pushed out a couple of weekends, then okay, so be it. You know, I get that not everybody's going to be able to not always make it back for the car count and for the race and everything like that. But sometimes it just can't be helped. Exactly. You're 100 percent right on that. <laughs> and and so, folks, the, for those of you that are out there listening to the show, if you yourself find your uh, opinion to be very Karen esque when it comes to short track racing, I got news for you: bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you know a bugger off i haven't heard in a while but karen-esque is a new <laughs> maybe i should say that when i'm at work ma'am please you're being very karen-esque <laughs> actually that would fit for you that, oh, that would that, that, that would fit for you <laughs> yeah oh, uh, so anyway uh, so, so Malia, you know, going back to everything here, so Alabama Speedway, because God knows we're having too much fun already. Uh, so, as far as like looking into these uh, these three series that we got coming up here uh, for the championship run uh, here towards the end of the month, here, uh, who who are some of the standout stars that we've got in those three series right now? Um, in the super stock is going to be Adam Salter, um, Nathan Henderson. Dean Shaw. I mean, that's just some of the local ones that run every weekend consistently. Um, Ricky Harrelson. Um, it's really anybody's game on that. Um, the mini sportsmen and mini cups. That's just a toss up depending on who comes and who, who shows up and who don't. Cause this last, this last race is a mm. double points race. Oh, wow. So Ooh. if, if you're right there at it, you stand a chance. Hmm. Okay. But you've got people like Adam Sowell and um, you, you throw me on names. I'm trying to remember not <laughs> that I have to say <laughs> something. <laughs> Dylan Wolf and those two are two in the uh, mini sportsmen. And then the mini cups, of course, you have Kevin Klein. He's a, a repeat champion. But his dad, mm-hmm. Steve Klein, is right there just nicking on it, looking for it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Good luck then to everybody who is competing for the championship coming up uh, here in the next week or so at South Alabama Speedway. And, uh, man, again, short track racing, grassroots, folks, that's where it's at. Make sure you go check out South Alabama Speedway if you just happen to be in the area. And, Malia, for folks who want to maybe, you know, who are traveling through the area or don't know all about South Alabama Speedway, where can they go to get information about it? We are on Facebook, of course, South Alabama Speedway. And then we also are on the web still, com. We're located on Highway 52, right inside of Kenton. Um, our prices are cheap, twelve fifty for adults, $5 for children ages 6 to 12, wow. 5 and under is free. And pit passes are $30 for adults, $12 for, uh, I don't know why I said $12, <laughs> $20 for children ages 3 to 11, 3 and under is free. Very cool stuff. Well, folks, make sure you go check out SouthAlabamaSpeedway.com. Check them out on Facebook, South Alabama Speedway. And, uh, and, and all that money goes towards, you know, helping make the purses the way they are. It goes uh, towards helping all of, the, all of the different things that go on around the facilities. And, again, grassroots racing is where it's at. And, yeah, uh, Malia, before we, uh, before we let you get out of here again for the week, you know, we can't let you leave without getting that tradition from you once again. It's a big old burning rubber, baby, at the top of your lungs. Are you serious? <laughs> well, I was going to say, may, may, you know, it, it might not get you two tenths on the racetrack, but it might prevent a rain out. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and what was it, a burning rubber, baby? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay, I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whenever you're ready. All right. Burning rubber, baby. Woo! No way uh, else this great. weekend at South Alabama Speedway, baby. Let's go. All right. Well, with that said here, folks, we're going to step aside. We're going to take our next Ford Fuel. And, Andy, you know what time it is, brother. we got to go right up the road in Alabama and go talk to the chef himself. Yeah, buddy. It's time to eat. Yes, sir. We're going to be talking to the NASCAR chef, John Dix, when we come Ooh, back. yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Want to maximize your driving potential? Drive Refine is the driver optimization program for you. Led by NASCAR winning driver Joey Coulter. No matter if you race locally, nationally, or on a simulator, with a little or a lot of experience, Drive Refine focuses on your tuning scale to optimize communication between the driver and their crew chief. Visit DriveRefine.com for more information today. Hey, this is former NASCAR driver Joey Coulter. This isn't your typical driver coaching. This is is driver fine this is burning rubber radio now let's get cooking in the kitchen with the nascar chef john dick and we are back on burning rubber radio on the performance motorsports network tan talk radio network wingding.tv on the roku and the fire stick and all the places where streaming tv is readily available and uh I can't forget we're also brought to you by luac coffee energy and andy you know what? we forgot one other big sponsor yeah. Monster, Monster 3X, 3X baby. Yeah. And uh so we're we're going to we're gonna, we're getting it in late but uh Raul, we love you down there at Monster 3X. Make sure you go check out monster3xusa.com and get your salt water lures, your fi- fresh water lures and uh Captain Jeff Vickers from uh Florida Outdoors also highly recommends it as well. That's right. So some good stuff all the way around the board and speaking of speaking of fish and chicken and chips and all the other fun stuff Andy you smell that, brother? Yeah, buddy. It's it's got to be the NASCAR chef John Dix, man. It smells good. Oh, I was, I was gonna say I thought you farted. Never mind. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> no, it is the NASCAR chef John Dix. John, what is good, brother? Hey guys, burning rubber, baby. Burning rubber. Burning baby. rubber, baby. All right. So, uh, what is good on the grill this week, brother? Well, I tell you, gang. This week we're gonna do a slow cooker chicken Philly sandwiches Ooh. oh Ooh. i'm gonna tell you guys this is tasty it's very easy we're gonna start with two pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast mm-hmm. now gang you can use boneless skinless chicken thighs if you want mm-hmm. which are a little little tastier they they're not quite on the diet end of it is the chicken breasts are but they're good <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna use a, a one green and one red bell pepper one onion also slice them all real thin four cloves of garlic mince it one teaspoon of dried oregano and thyme one teaspoon of salt and pepper a cup of chicken broth eight slices of provolone cheese and four hoagie rolls that's all you need and you're going to place your chicken breast in the bottom of the slow cooker and on the top, you want to add the onions, the bell peppers, the garlic, the thyme, the oregano, salt and pepper, all your ingredients, and then pour the chicken broth over the ingredients. Cover it and cook on low for about six to eight hours. Or if you're in a hurry, you can do it on high for about three to four hours. Once the chicken is cooked, you want to pull it apart with a couple of forks and mix all your ingredients together and let it heat again for about another 10 minutes so all your ingredients get all that good taste in it. You're going to preheat your oven to broil. Then in a baking sheet, you want to place your rolls, open them up, and you want to toast them for about two to three minutes. Then take it out of the oven and evenly place your chicken mixture on each roll. Then put two slices of cheese on top of all that and broil it again for about a minute to two minutes until the the cheese is bubbling. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. I guarantee you, you'll make this recipe again. Uh, John, I, I, I'm sitting wow. here, and I'm sure Andy was looking at me on camera like, what the heck is on his face? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think I died and went to heaven with this one. Yes. <laughs> this sounds really good. good. stuff, guys. Yeah, like, seriously. I, I, I think I died and went to heaven because the look on my face is like. <sighs> oh, yeah. And I'm telling you, that fish recipe from last week was good, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So- Trying to I fun, try to do you that. Know, As we all know, Andy, I try to do that, you know, when it's seasonal. Uh, yep. What, what kind, of, kind of fish is seasonal down there in our wonderful Tan Talk neighborhood? That's right. Yep. Well, I, I uh, just tell the folks how they can go about uh, getting in touch with you, John. Plus, before we do that, folks, if you want to see these uh, recipes, you can always go to wingding.tv and Fast forward around and you can see it. Also, I'd like to start being able to post these things up every week on our Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. And so everybody can see this stuff. But, John, how do folks get in touch with you if they want to talk to the NASCAR chef? Well, Andy, they can reach out to me at Racing to the Grill 
at gmail.com. That's R A C I N G, the number two, the grill at gmail.com. Yep. And uh, make sure you make sure you get a hold of the NASCAR chef too, because uh, folks, as we've been talking about uh, a few times already, you not only are we looking at you know updating the stuff, so we're posting these as an album on social media, but we're also looking at the first ever NASCAR chef cookbook, and we're going to compile all the recipes from at least the last four years uh, with Burning Rubber Radio. And yes, I said four years because as we head into 2024. We're going to be heading into season number four, Andy. Of the comeback, but this yeah. is going to be our 17th year being around. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome right. they stuff. Can't, they can't run us off that easy, guys. Nope. No, and, uh, they can't. And- 17 years, John, you've been around with it. Can you believe this? Mm-hmm. I know. We've all put up with each other that long. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and yeah. I, well, at least I've gotten fat knowing you and that's great and what's funny is i've lost weight and regained it back knowing john <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> so if there's one thing you didn't lose wayne is that you're ugly brother you have um, kept that hey you you've had the ugly long before i did so <laughs> you're you're the one that, you're, you're the one that introduced me to the daggum ugly stick you sorry son of a gun. <laughs> no, don't get me started i'm still trying to get over this stinking cold <laughs> i'm sure everybody else has and i'll start hacking and coughing and it'll be horrible yeah. Hey guys, I re- I resemble that remark. So be be nice now. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Oh man, well we love you, John. Again, folks, if you ever want to reach out to the NASCAR chef, all you got to do is re- send him an email at racing to the grill. R A C I N G the number two the grill at gmail dot com. Go ahead and take one last good look at the recipe here for the week. And again, slow cooker chicken sandwiches, like just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I mean, you, you picture Philly cheesesteak. I mean, this is chicken, chicken Philly cheesesteaks. So, good stuff all the way around the board. We're gonna step aside and we're gonna take the next four and fuel. Actually, the final four and fuel of the show here, Andy. And when we come back, news of the week picks coming up for Texas, and I think William Sawalich is in there with a championship somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, he is. I'm Captain Jeff Figures from Florida Fishing and Adventures. Do you want to constantly catch more fish, spend less time changing baits? If so, Monster 3X baits, jigs, and scents are the answer. Monster 3X baits are tough, durable, and resistant, which allows you to catch more fish per bait. The combination of the Monster 3X lure with the Procure Bait Super Scent, you would be landing more fish right away. Whether it's the Monster 3X Ultra Soft or the X Swim lures, Swim Shad, Paddle Tails, Crawfish, or the X Frog, Monster 3X, you'll always find it in my tackle box. Visit our website at burningrubberradio.com for recipes from the NASCAR chef, John Dix, and more great content. Now back to more Burning Rubber Radio. And we are back on Burning Rubber Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Tan Talk Radio Network, Wingding.tv on your Roku and your Fire Stick and wherever you get streaming TV. Uh-oh. Yeah, all the good stuff there with Wingding.tv. And Andy, it is that time here, brother, where we get into some final news of the week. And with that final news of the week here... William Sawalich, you know, he was one of the many that gave us that big old burning rubber baby this year. Yes. And with that, that makes two championships that we've got, folks. That's right. Two championships for yelling burning rubber. But I'm telling you, we have got to get him back on to mm-hmm. celebrate this thing. He was an awesome guest. Yes, he was. So, and actually, I think Taylor was the one who got him, got him, got us William originally. Yeah. Well, John or Taylor or somebody and, and and everybody out there, if you like listening to uh, our guests and whatnot and you want to be a guest, make sure you uh, reach out to John Dix, our NASCAR chef at racingtothegrill at gmail.com because John, believe it or not, and thank you for all of this, John, he's the one that's, that uh, gets our guests all set up mm-hmm. for the show. Yep. So mm-hmm. without him, uh, all I'd have to be doing is sitting here talking to the ugly mug that's to the left of me on the screen. No, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. See, see, you're to my left on the video. I'm you. I'm, and then of course I'm to your right. So yeah, something like that, man. Anyway, it, that it, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Love you too, brother. Um, <laughs> but uh, but with that said here, we got to get into some other news of the week here real quick, Andy. And uh, a new bit of news that just dropped this past weekend here, and that being one Zane Smith. He's moving up from the world of the truck series and going to be going into a multi-year deal with Trackhouse. The track house now, cup right? They don't do Xfinity. They they right? well, they are purely Cup Series. Yep. And I know that they just bought a, uh, a what do you call it? A charter. A charter. Yeah, they just bought a charter. But also, no one said anything. Shane Van Gisbergen, he's just signed. He's going to be full time mm-hmm. next year or part time. I'm not sure, honestly. Um, Probably but I don't for right now. He's part time. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's going to be part time for right now. Okay, so that has to have been bought for Shane, then, is what I'm thinking. Most likely. So Zane is going to be one of the ones that's going to be racing without a charter, so he's going to have to guarantee his way in every single week. Okay, yeah. So I'm kind of I'm wondering. It's it's going to be fun to watch it. I also have some more news uh, about something. Okay, what you got? No more Bristol dirt, baby. Yeah, we were, you know, we were talking about that. Yes, uh, Sunday. Matter of fact, uh, I had heard rumors uh, from an, another rider that I had in the car with me that uh, he would read the news article that Bristol dirt was going away in 2024, and you know, just happened to see the confirmation on that. And that's, you know, the sad part is it was kind of it was, I was starting to warm up to the idea finally. Well, I was warming up to the idea that dirt's good for growing potatoes. And that's about it. <laughs> hey, you know you like your dirt racing, hush. I, it, it, it's fun to watch, but honestly, man, mm-hmm. keep the cup cars on the pavement, on the concrete. Mm-hmm. That's what I've always thought, but that's whatever. And and even though Bristol Dirt's going away, the clash of the Coliseum is going to be back oh, next boy. season. So, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I like the idea of doing it at you know I, I I love the idea of doing an exhibition race at the beginning of the year. I mean that's what you know that's what the duels at Daytona were all about. Not the clash at the Coliseum. Yeah, I, I'm not big about that clash. And they're gonna bring NASCAR Mexico in to run a race before uh-huh. the Cup Series race. Yeah. It's going to run the same day, but they're going to run the NASCAR Mexico race the day or the few hours before the cups runs. See, and at that point, all all that's going to do, and uh, <laughs> I, I feel I feel like Speedy Gonzalez is coming on TV. It's going to be like Andale, ole. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be a. I think it's going to be a cluster. Hit, hit, get ready with oh. those. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, well. You did it, so I don't need to say it. You know what I'm saying. But uh, also known as a shit show. Uh-huh. There you go. You got to do them that time. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I was anyway, going to say, if you, were, if you weren't going to say it, I was. The Clash of the Coliseum is a giant shit show. Yes, sir, it is. And, and, and we uh, meant it with those air uh, wrenches there. Yes, we did. And don't get me wrong. Yes, doing it out in California, it does add a little bit of value to the entertainment. You, I mean, the con, the concerts. I'm not gonna lie. The concerts last year were lackluster at best. Uh, the fact that they're doing it inside the Trojan Stadium, uh, the, aka the Coliseum. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I like that value added entertainment because that's where the Olympics have been for uh, you know a few times around the block. But all in all, no. Just no. Yeah, exactly. And if you actually said, hey, I want to go to this race and you went down there to it, you better pack some heat because it's not in a good part of town either. Nope. L.A. LA is down near or uh, where it's at in L.A. is down near Skid Row. And, yeah, big uh, time. And, and, and folks, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with Los Angeles uh, or if you've just been you know impervious to the obvious when it comes to Skid Row, Skid Row is 15 miles of homeless folks. And from what I from what I have seen and what I have heard in that part of L.A., they get pretty violent. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be down there. So, folks in L.A., if you don't like what you have to say, go to wingding.tv, and this is what I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. I love it. But, you know what, moving on here on to some other, uh, other good stuff here, Andy, and that being some news that our good buddy Daniel Dye is set to pilot the number 44 for Alpha Prime Racing. 
kind of correlates, awesome. kind of correlates how we talked about Alpha Prime earlier on in the show. Uh, and he's going to have three different Alpha Prime races this season in the Xfinity Series in the number 44 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. And the first event will be this coming weekend at Texas Motor Speedway. Now, I wonder if he's going to be sharing time with our buddy Ryan Ellis. Because I know he's been running uh, Alpha Prime stuff. Has it been in that 44? Uh, no. Uh, no. Who is it Who is it that's all been in the 44? I can't remember who all has been in the 44. I don't but, know. But... Uh, but our good buddy Dave Vinesett, we know he's going to be knowing what's up. And, yeah, he's uh... not going to be the jack, man. He's going to be fueling the thing. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to tell him you call him a jack man and not a gas man. <laughs> oh. Uh, but either which way, <laughs> moving on over to some other good news here. And uh, speaking of Arca racers, Jesse Love Andy gets himself his first ever ASA Stars win this past weekend over at Toledo Speedway. All right, and good, good for him. The kid, the kid's a, a wheel man. Yeah, he is. Yep, he is. He, Jesse Love, phenomenal racer all the way around here. Some good stuff there. And uh, moving up from the world of the Road to Indy series, uh, now going into the IndyCar world here, Kiffin Simpson has officially made it known that he's going to be jumping into the NTT IndyCar series full-time with Chip Ganassi Racing coming up next season. Oh, never heard of him. So I mean, he's been on the road to Indy for a couple of years now, and he's 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 not he's not half bad. He's got some talent. So uh, all right, I think I think he's gonna get I think he's gonna give Alex Palo a run for his money next year. Oh, all right, there you go. So uh, so some good stuff. And uh, oh, and <laughs> Verstappen's streak finally got broken, Andy. Really? Who who won in Formula One this week? Carlos Sainz. Oh, good for him. He, he was due. Yep, yep. Signs was definitely due to get himself a win. And it was in Singapore uh, this past weekend. Uh, so the Singapore GP uh, this past weekend here. Carlos Signs got himself the win. And I'm trying to actually see where Verstappen finished at here. Uh, let's see. Uh, back on track, George Russell. This, uh, two, 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 two. Red Bull salvages a tough weekend. Ferrari victory meant the end of a 15-race streak of winning for Red Bull Racing. Oh, so sad. You know, it's a, it, it's such a sad thing. Um, and apparently it was a bad weekend for uh, for Red Bull uh, this past weekend here. Uh, and, uh, reigning champion Max Verstappen started 11th and managed to secure a 5th place finish, so he didn't even get on the podium this past weekend here. And uh, teammate Sergio Perez only made it up to eighth. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I, I was going to say, so, you know, hearing the fact, I, I'm surprised. It, again, it's a shame that Zach's not here because I guarantee he'd be jumping for joy. Oh, my God, he didn't get a podium. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it is. Uh, actually, speaking of uh, speaking of other funny things here, too, and uh, another guy that we're working on getting on the show or – at least have been for a while here. Stuart Friesen, Andy, uh, this yes. past weekend. Not only did he go race in the Craftsman Truck Series race at Bristol, but then he traveled all the way up to Fonda, New York, and battled off uh, Brandon Shepard Saturday night at Fonda Speedway for a cool, you ready for this one, $53,000. Man, he went up there and stole the kids' lunch money. That isn't right. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, no. Well, Friesen was actually due for a win because he had been having he's been having a rough season this year. Yeah, but man, he's he he runs the big time, but I'm sure he could use it because there's no money in the truck series for real. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, good for him. Yep, some good stuff all the way around there for our good friends. Do it Friesen. And uh with that said, here it is time, Andy, that we get on over to PX Fold the Week. Coming up into uh, Texas Motor Speedway, uh, the Echo Park Automotive. Well, no, actually, no, the Echo Park Automotive GP. That was earlier this year, I think. Or is it this weekend? I'm trying to think what the actual name of the race is this weekend. I can't remember if it's the Echo I don't Park know. I just know they're running at Texas, the Xfinity oh, Series yeah. and the Cup Series. So it, it actually is. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. So, okay, cool. I remember they do the Echo Park Grand Prix technically at uh in, in like the or no, that's at Circuit of the Americas that they do that. Circuit of the Americas, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I was 
<laughs> hey, it's Texas. I guess it counts, right? Um, but either which way here, Texas Motor Speedway this weekend in the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Uh, you have pick number one, my friend. All right. I can't stand the guy, but Ty Gibbs did one heck of a job at Bristol. Uh, and he can actually drive a race car, so I'm picking Ty Gibbs. All right, Ty Gibbs. And uh, with that said here, you know, we're going into the round of 12, kicking it all off uh, this week here. And uh, now, granted, now I'm, I'm going to say that this pick is going to be in memory of uh, of Sherry Pollux, but I'm going to go with Martin Truex Jr. Uh, that's that's decent. And so, uh, so I, 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 and, and MTJ usually does pretty good at Texas anyway. So, yep. uh He's got yeah, a chance he does. To, he's got a chance. He's to strong there. He is. He's very strong. So good chance to see old MTJ pick up the six shooters again this weekend at Texas. Taylor Burris, uh, he is going to go with, uh, scrolling through the list here, Willie B. So he's thinking old William Byron is going to grab himself the cowboy hat and the six shooters this week here. Um, he's strong there too. Yes, he is very strong here. And actually, Zachary Murtis, I, I don't know what it is with these two here of late. Murtis and Burris, Murtis and Burris, boy, that rhymes. Uh, <laughs> they they pick the same folks every week. They're here or late. So uh, Zach is going to go with Willie B as well. And then NASCAR chef John Dix, you are up next, my friend. Well, you know, uh, Mr. Blaney runs good at the mile and a half, mm -hmm. so I'm going with him. All right. Good, so good. round of 12 says Ryan Blaney. Bobby Dale Earnhardt gets a self a pick in this week here, and he's uh, – He's going with me this week, Andy. He's going to say that MTJ gets it done. That's, that's a safe bet. Yep, safe bet indeed. Well, folks, with that said, again, we are the fastest 60 minutes in motorsports for a reason. We are Burning Rubber Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network, the Tan Talk Radio Network, Wingding.tv for our guests this week, Malia Hill from South Alabama Speedway, the NASCAR chef John Dex, Bobby Dillon, Hart, Jeremy Taylor, Taylor Burr, Zachary Murtis, Andy DeLay, and the NASCAR chef, John Dix. I am producer Wayne. We love you guys. And until next week, burning rubber, baby. Burning rubber, baby. Burning Rubber Radio is a production of the Performance Motorsports Network in association with the White Lightning TV Studios in Statesville, North Carolina. This week's episode was produced by Wayne Owens. Remember to visit BurningRubberRadio.com for news, recipes, and more great content. Burning Rubber Radio may also be downloaded from our podcast site, pmn2.com, or from Spotify, iTunes, or Google Podcasts. The opinions expressed on this show are those of the hosts and guests and do not reflect those of the Performance Motorsports Network or the Scorpion Radio Group. Any use of the accounts or descriptions contained in this broadcast must be with the express written permission of the Performance Motorsports Network or the Scorpion Radio Group.